And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Good morning. morning. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. I know you're wondering who is a stranger that's here today. I'm going to borrow, use one of these, okay? So, let's see, is this on? Test, 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 there we go. You all doing all right? I talked with your pastor this morning. He's feeling a little bit under the weather, but he sends his love. So just keep Pastor Sean in your prayers. My name is Tony Anopoli. I'm the vice president for ministries for the Southwestern Union Conference as well as the ministerial director. And we had worked out this date uh, months ago to be with you, including, and I'm just letting you know and warning you, he also asked me to come back in November. So if this doesn't go real well today, you should tell him cancel the November, right? Just feel free to do that. Um, Seeing these flags brings my heart a lot of joy for several reasons. Number one, prior to coming to the Union, I was at the North American Division, and I had the privilege of serving as a Vice President for Multilingual Ministries. And we had 15 language groups that uh, that I uh, had the privilege of working with that were officially recognized by the Division, and over 500,000 members all across the country in Canada and as well as Guam, Micronesia. But... When people ask me who I am, I I see most of the flags that I can relate with. Some are missing, and I'll have to talk to Pastor Sean about that, so I'm not offended when I come back in November. But here's how it goes. I was born in Canada. My dad was from Italy. My mom's from Argentina. I lived in the States, studied in Mexico, and married a Puerto Rican. So, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the way that goes. I... uh, you know, God, God works in incredible ways, and I've experienced this in 38 years of ministry. Uh, sometimes we coordinate a lot of what's going to happen before I speak. Sometimes we don't coordinate anything. Um, and because of everything going on and all the happenings, we did not coordinate anything for today. However, it's amazing how even the worship songs that we sang all have to do with what the message the Lord placed on my heart. That's the way he works. It's amazing. Unless... Y'all, some of you heard of Jose Rojas? Jose Rojas is one of my best friends in the world, and uh, I was at, in Arizona. I had served as president of the Arizona Conference, and we had a convocation. And if you know Jose Rojas, I consider him one of the top three speakers we have in our church. So that day, the youth speaker could not make it to the convocation. So I said, Pastor Tony, can you speak? So I said, Sure. So it's the young people, and, you know, you always have some stories and sermons. And one of the the stories I love is the story of Naaman. That's not what we're talking about today. But anyway, so I preach my heart out, Naaman, Naaman, Naaman. I just, you know, I just, one one preacher one time, I said, how did you do? He goes, I was so good, I took notes on myself. Well, I mean, that's how I felt that sermon went in the morning. Well, but I'm not a great preacher. That afternoon, Jose Rojas was speaking in the same place. Yeah, see, you already know where I'm going. So he gets up, and the first thing he says, Naaman, isn't that an interesting name? And I got up and walked out because I knew that he was going to do circles around my sermon. So sometimes that happens. But today the Lord coordinated everything so that I could share a message that just brings me joy. We're right in between Mother's Day and Father's Day. Uh... Mother's Day was a couple weeks ago, and Father's Day is coming up, obviously. My mom is in full-time memory care with Alzheimer's. She cannot remember anything. In fact, I'm heading there tomorrow with my oldest son. I have three kids and two foster boys. Both my boys are pastors. My oldest is in San Antonio, and he's coming. He's driving up after he preaches today. My youngest son is a pastor in Tennessee. My daughter married a pastor, so just pray for us, because there are four of us in the family, and you know, can just imagine, and, and we're all type A personalities, except for my son-in-law. My son-in-law's very calm, thank goodness, but the th- in fact, when we had family worship growing with our kids, we made a rule that whoever was in charge, nobody else could talk, because all five of us have an opinion on everything. So anyway... Um, but we're leaving tomorrow with my, with my oldest, and we have two foster boys that are juniors. They just graduated from uh, Chisholm Trail Academy, and they will be enjoying the summer, and they'll be seniors next year. So I just turned 60, and I have two teenagers. Pray for me. Pray for uh, that I won't need a pacemaker. But anyway, um, 
And my mom has no memory of who we are. So I get sad when I think about that. My dad, 28 years ago, passed away with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. So he's been gone for a long time. I miss him. Our lesson this quarter is talking about some pretty important things about the end times. Would you agree? Yeah, I tell my kids, in fact, even before they were pastors, I said, you know, we are seeing prophecy fulfilled before our very eyes. Uh, if ever uh, we, and I'm sure every generation says this, I can't imagine it's going to get much worse. I'm sure every generation, I'm sure my parents said it and their parents, but I'm telling you, I worry about my boys that are starting out as pastors. I worry about my grandson. This will be my first grandpa day. Isn't that pretty cool? I'm excited about that. My, my grandson is 10 months old today, so you share a, not a, almost a birthday. Happy birthday. Um, I worry about the world. What the Bible says is true. The lessons we're studying, all of it's true. Last week we were at, uh, at the union office and we studied about Babylon. All of that's true. But I'm excited because the Bible also tells me how it's going to end. And I believe the Bible. Now, I'm a former youth director, former young adult director, and so I've studied all this uh, sociology thing, and by that I mean all the generations, all the way starting with the GI generation, then the silent generation, then the boomer generation, then the Gen Xers, then the millennials, and then Gen Z, and now Generation Alpha, and now there's another generation coming. And... What's amazing about all of that is through all of that, I am telling you that as we see each generation and everything that is around them and how we need to minister to them, I'm excited to tell you that I know how the story ends. I believe the Bible, and it's true. Now, the disciples had the same questions that I have, and that maybe you have. How is it going to end? What's going to happen? He had just been with them for three and a half years, and now he says, I'm going to leave. I'm going. And the disciples had the deer in the headlights. You ever seen that, or that, ha that happened to you? Have you ever had a deer in the headlights? It's a pretty scary thing. I've had that happen. And I was, I was having an argument with my, we were on vacation, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, and as I was arguing, I, right when I turned back, there's a deer at night facing me, and I swerved and barely missed. It's a scary thing. Deer in the headlights. That's what it looks like. The disciples now have the deer in the headlights. Look, Jesus said, I am going to leave. They had left everything. And if you study, remember your lesson from several years ago, the rabbi, the whole purpose of a rabbi was that he picked people to be in his group that he wanted to prepare for them to be rabbis. That's why they followed the master. That's why they followed their rabbi, so that one day they would become rabbis, and then they would have their group. Well, now their rabbi says, I'm leaving. And they got nervous and scared and said, well, wait a minute. What about us? What about our future? What about the end of time? And Jesus, who just knew all things, gave an incredible answer that's, that was relevant then and even more relevant today. And it's found in a memory verse that most of us learned. You saw the thing about Vacation Bible School. I would encourage you to bring your kids. That's a great evangelistic tool, by the way. Kids, I, I like the way the, the, the I like what you said. You, you thank the little boy for bringing his parents. You bring your kids to, to Vacation Bible School, someone has to drive them, right? All right, there you go. I'll just leave it there. We learned this, at, uh, hopefully, when we were kids, but it's in John chapter 14, by the way, from the Gospel of John. The second half is devoted pretty much to the last 24 hours of the life of Jesus and what happened afterwards. So now, in chapter 14, he's just announced that he's leaving. They're about to have the Last Supper experience and all that's going to happen. And Jesus, seeing that, they were nervous. And let me tell you, church family, Pre-COVID, but for sure during COVID and post-COVID, we live in a world that's terrified. The world is scared. And even if we take the Bible out of the equation, if you do just Google science 
and the cosmos, and they will tell you, scientists will tell you, the world, the physical world, cannot survive very much longer. Then, and I, this is just a statement, I have individuals that are always with conspiracies and this and that, and, and I was at the division, you're always blessed because they all write you everything, and you receive all of this. And I got several emails and texts, but, but they're interesting. One of them in particular, they measure tremors. In the context, and they put in this pastor, I want you to know the Bible says that, that the, it, it groans, groans. And someone did a study that there's a tremor or something every 3.2 seconds somewhere in the world. Everything is pointing to the fact that something is going to happen. Well, again, if you read your Bible, you have nothing to worry about. But Jesus, again, realizing that the disciples were, were scared, and if you're scared today, a little bit nervous, you know, I remember I grew up in a very uh, um, conservative Hispanic church, so Hispano, very conservative Hispanic church. And they would say, if Jesus came today, would you be ready? See how quiet it got in here? And I remember thinking when I was a kid, man, I don't even have my driver's license. I never got, you know, all that, because in heaven, we're not going to get married. I'm like, man. And that's what, you know, but th are you ready? If you came today, would you be ready right now? And I'm telling you, a lot of us would be, nope, because that's the way we were taught. But I'm telling you, Jesus could come at any moment. For me, he could come as soon as I get out of the driveway today, right? Could be it. Well, I have good news for you today. And Jesus, knowing that his disciples were nervous, gave them great counsel that we know and hopefully you've memorized. This is how he starts to comfort them. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. Now listen, he says, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go, and he did, and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you, receive you, the King James Version says, unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I'm here to tell you today, church family, that is great news. You know, we have troubles in this world. Some of you have had a rough week. Some of you don't know how you're going to make the finances all work out. I know. In fact, I, you know, we, we homeschooled our kids when they were, my wife's a, a special ed teacher. Pray for her. She says she has helped every single student except one, me. <laughs> I'm ADHD, attention deficit hyper disorder. So you'll see me walk around and go all over the place, but that's okay. And, she's, and, 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 and so we homeschooled our kids. So we didn't have income, double income. And sometimes we lived paycheck to paycheck. And I will tell you, just don't say anything. I know we're streaming live, but just don't tell anybody. I would borrow from my daughter's savings account. She knew it to make ends meet. So there are problems in this world. There are tough times. I was at the North American Division when COVID hit. My associate, his dad, his dad went to sleep in New York feeling good on Sunday night. Woke up Monday morning, didn't feel too good. By Wednesday morning, died of COVID, 48 hours later. We live in a world where there are things that we can't control. We live in a world where there are things that we've messed up for ourselves because we've made bad decisions to our bodies financial, whatever it is, all of that, Jesus says, now listen, here it is, don't let your hearts be troubled. Yeah, that sounds really good, Tony, but hmm, sounds good up here. It's a little bit harder here, but this is the great news. For a Christian, we should never be troubled. Wouldn't that be great? To actually believe that, but, but Je now Jesus, now this, when he said it, it's an imperative. Now, I, I can relate to your children's story because my mom 
bless her heart, kept all of my interim reports. Now, my parents did their best. My dad had third grade education. My mom had fourth grade education. They worked outside the home. Very typical of a Gen Xer. Not because they wanted to, but because they had to to make ends meet. My dad was a baker for 34 years before he was diagnosed with ALS. And he worked his tail off the graveyard shift so that my sister and I could spend every single day in the Seventh-day Adventist school. I'm grateful for that. But they weren't home when I got home. I was a latchkey kid. How much homework do you think an ADHD kid's going to do with no supervision? Yeah, zero. I think I hold a record for being the only kid to graduate from high school with no homework. And my mom would go, do you have homework? No. And I was great at explaining why I had no homework. But she kept all my reports. Poor failing. Poor failing. Tony's nice, but he talks all the time. Tony daydreams. Tony this. Tony that. Poor failing. So I know. But Jesus says, hey, it doesn't matter. A Christian, do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, it's an imperative. That's where I was going. See, I had an ADHD moment. What's an imperative? What is it? It's a command. It's an order. Jesus didn't say, well, now, listen, you know, yeah, I know it's tough. Try, try to make the best of it. Give it your best shot. No, he didn't say that. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You're worried today? Don't worry. Okay, well, that sounds good, but he gave five reasons why, and we're quickly going to go through the five of why we should not be troubled. Number one, Jesus is God. Believe in God, believe also in me. And we know how the story ends. There are two things you can always trust about Jesus. This is amazing, and I love this, and, and we're having an interesting time with our foster kids as because they didn't grow up Adventist. And fa- we had them when they were one and two years old. We had them for two years, and they went to Mexico and lived for 10 years in, in, in a non adventist environment. Now they're, they're back with us, and they're studying the word. They were baptized last year, so we're, we're helping them along. We feel like we're Moses' parents. We're, we don't know how much time we have. We're giving them all we've got. But they're struggling, asking questions, and it's good. You know, you can ask questions. God can take it. You got some concerns? Ask him. You're upset? Tell him. He can take it. Just don't stop talking. Two things about Jesus that I love. Number one, he always tells the truth. He always tells the truth. Now, that's for, for a Gen Xer, that's important because the one word that describes my generation is alone. Not lonely, alone. Alone is being in a room full of people, but feeling like you're all by yourself. You don't trust anybody. My generation, when we go to have the oil change, we want to see and make sure that they're really draining the oil, that they're putting in the new filter because, you know, we don't know. And are they really (coughs) putting in fully synthetic? I don't know. I don't trust. You can trust Jesus. He always tells the truth. And number two, he never asks us to do anything he hasn't already done. Never. He has gone before. He says, believe in God. Believe also in me. You can trust Jesus. So today, the 3rd of June, 2023, don't let your hearts be troubled. Number two, the second reason why we should not be worried. In my father's house are many rooms. Now, the King James says mansions, but we've, 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 we've updated it to, to reality. It's rooms. Now, why is that important? I told you we were on vacation. Now, you know, in the good old days, remember, I grew up without parents at home, so I watched a lot of television, a lot of movies. There was a movie, The Serious Vacation with Chevy Chase. My family is the Griswolds of Adventism. If anything can go wrong, it will go wrong when we go on vacation. When I was pastor, I would say, I would announce to the church, I'm going to go on vacation. They would, oh, and they'd have a season of prayer because they already knew. They didn't know what was happening, but they knew something was going to happen. In the year 2000, I was born in Toronto, Canada. We decided we were going to go to the general conference session in Toronto. And by the way, parents, if you have kids, let me just give you, this is great news. This is great, great counsel I'm going to give you. You need to do a cross-country trip. You need to do at least one cross-country trip to know you never want to do another cross-country trip. My kids were 10, 9, and 7. My 7-year-old, who's a dad now, when are we, are we there yet? When are we going to get there? And I said, 5 o'clock. At 5.01, he said, you're a liar. 
So I had to always add an hour or more because I knew he was going to call me on it. So we bought a brand new van. We did, you know, I did, I, I, I'm choleric, so I plan out everything. And the trip should have been about 2,900 miles to Toronto and back. My wife, who's a teacher, and I love teachers. I mean, I married a teacher. I love teachers. But there's one thing that drives me crazy about teachers. Just one. Every moment is a teachable moment. Every moment. They had, she had just read the Little House on the Prairie series with my kids. So she announces that we didn't discuss, we didn't have a 50, 50 no. She announces on this trip, we're going to go visit every, every single place Laura Ingalls Wilder ever set foot. If it was rumored that Laura Ingalls, there we were. So a trip that should have taken 2,700 miles, more or less. We got back a month later. We had put over 8,000 miles on that brand new van. Because of that, being summer and all, we would get into town. Now, if you plan your trip like we normally do, we know where we're going to be. You reserve a hotel. Well, we didn't know because, you know, I don't know the lowering. We got we to go that way. The other guy got to go this way. We'd come into town without having made any plans. And you know what we'd see? Sign after sign that said what? No vacancy. No vacancy. No vacancy. And I've got three kids that want vacancy and, and a frustrated dad and a mom saying, hurry up, we got to go to the next I'm like, so sometimes we slept in the van because there wasn't any room. You ever been left out? You ever felt like you don't belong? Or you don't fit in? I felt that. Most of us have immigrated to this country. I, you know, I grew up in a, a, and I lived, went to a very affluent school, but I, we didn't have money. I, I know what it's like to be on the outside looking in. I know what it's like to not have or be told there's no room for you. But Jesus says, in my father's house, there's room for everybody. There will never be a no vacancy sign put in heaven, ever. There is room for everyone. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter. It, it, there is room for you. Third reason why Jesus says, don't be troubled, don't be upset, don't worry, is I am going there to prepare a place for you. Well, how's that different? Very different. Number two reminds us there's room in the house. Number three says, Jesus, and this is, oh man, I, I get chills. Jesus is customizing a room just for you, just for me. Mine is going to be, sorry, Dodger Blue. There's going to be a Taco Bell dispenser in the corner because Jesus knows my likes, and he's customizing that room just for me. When we were pastoring in California, we had a house built in 1928. We loved it, 1,200 square feet, little tiny thing, but, uh, and my daughter's the middle child, you know, but she runs everything, but she was the middle child. Um, and at five years old, you know, she loved, she would sleep with her brothers, you know, they had the bunk beds and she had her bed, she loved it, but we said, you know, I think it's time for her to have her own, room. we just decided time for her to have her own room. There was only one room left, and that was the one that I used for an office, it was an unfinished room. Now, I became a pastor for a lot of reasons, but one of them was because I don't like to do labor. One time they said to me, and I think we talked about this last week, they said, what do you do now that, now that you know, wh what do you do besides golf and tennis and preach once a week? That's what they said. We know that's all you do. I said, that offends me. I watch television, too. <laughs> I said, to me, if you're going to say something silly, I'm going to respond with something silly. So, but, but, you know, but, but, and my daughter, we believe, we're not sure, we can't prove it, we think she works for the CIA because she knows she smells everything. Ev she knows everything. So we knew we had to work fast. Because if we don't work fast, she was going to figure it out. In fact, we asked her one time, do you work for the CIA? Of course not. She goes, of course not. And we go, yeah, that's probably, <laughs> we thought you were going to say that. So for 
48 hours, we worked nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And I mean, you know, usually after 10 minutes, my best friend was the president of the Northern California Conference, Jim Pedersen, and we, we would, for whatever reason, we'd be possessed to do these, these silly projects. And one of them was paint all the trims as he was selling his house, and so we're going to paint all the trim. And so we bought the paint, did everything, got the ladder, and realized at that point both of us were afraid of heights. But I was the younger, so I, he ordered me up. And after 10 minutes or so, we said, it's hot. What were we thinking? I don't know. I can't believe it. So that's normally how it went. But on this occasion, as we were preparing this room for our daughter, suddenly time just went by. Why? Because this was for my baby. I couldn't wait. I mean, I, there was so much excitement. We put drywall, drywall. We put tape. We painted. My wife, who's so artistic, put pink and ballerinas. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, and next thing you know, we didn't eat, we didn't sleep, because we knew we had to go without stopping, but it didn't matter to me. All of a sudden, we're done, and I'm, I felt great. Why? Because I was preparing the room for my daughter, for my baby. Now listen, Jesus is preparing a room just for you. Now here's the thing, and we'll talk about this at the end. No one else can occupy that room. When I came to the union two years ago, the plaque was blank because the person before me, who is now the president of Texas, they took his name off and they put my name on. When I leave, they're going to take my name off and put someone else's name on. That's not going to happen in heaven. If you're not there to occupy your room, it's going to stay empty for all eternity. They're not going to go next. No, there is no next. He's customizing it just for you with your light, hoping that you'll enjoy it when you and I get to heaven and the earth made new. The fourth reason Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about your mom with Alzheimer's. Don't worry about your dad who's been sleeping for 28 years. You're going to see all of them again. Is because if I go and prepare a place for you, which he did, and he always tells the truth, I will come back and take you to be with me, right? On the day of her birthday, her fifth birthday, we woke up early, and I had, and you know, no, now you take out your phone, and you, you know, and within seconds, you're up lawyering, and 50 billion people have seen it. Well, not in those days. You had to have, and, and I know for you young, you're gonna, young people don't know any clue, a VCR camera, and it was huge. You know, you always, you do, 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 on my shoulder. And I went inside, you know, and I'm, and I'm blinding her with the light because, you know, you got to put the tape in, you got to do all of that. Ask your parents or grandparents, they'll tell you. My, my wife went and woke her up and said, baby, we, we want to show you something. So she took her by the hand, and I'm inside waiting, <laughs> opens the door, and I <laughs> start filming, happy birthday. And she looks around, and we go, baby, this room is for you. And she goes, this is mine? It's yours. By the way, it was my office study. I have to give that up, just saying. Do you like it? I love it. Oh, and the excitement. And it's pink, your favorite color, right? Well, I like blue, Daddy, but, but pink's okay. <laughs> uh, no, Jesus won't get that wrong either. Now, listen, I don't know how it's going to be because there are going to be a lot of us in heaven. I don't know how it's going to be. But what I do know is this. At a given moment, Jesus is going to come to you and take you by the hand and walk you to your room and say, welcome home. I've been preparing this room just for you. The fifth reason Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled, is that where I am, there you may be also. As my friend Jose Rojas says, the king of the universe wants to hang out with you. Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit cannot imagine eternity without you and me. They can't imagine it. Let me ask you something. Have you ever thought about eternity? I mean, have you ever thought about it? It's kind of mind-boggling. When we do an evangelistic series... And, and, I, and I love, you know, we start with Daniel, uh, and you start with Daniel 2, and you have to because the, the, the whole statue in Daniel 3, it's incredible. I mean, history, I mean, just perfect 
chronology. So that's amazing. But, but we tell a story when we get to what heaven will be like. And we say, how long is eternity? How, and, and this is the example we give. If a bird comes to the ocean, a seagull, and takes one slurp of water, one slurp from the ocean, and flies away for a thousand years, and comes back in a thousand years and takes another slurp, and flies away for another thousand. When he's done emptying the ocean, one slurp every thousand years, eternity will just have started. Let me give you another example. I traveled a lot when I was at the division. I was gone probably 280 days a year. And you're in a whole different time zone. And sometimes I'd wake up and not know where I was or why I was. And a lot of times you can't, I can't sleep because I'm a light sleeper anyway. But anyway, one of those occasions I just woke up and I started thinking, what if I'm not there? You ever thought of that? What if you don't make it to heaven? And you know what? I started crying. Now I'm Italian, so I mean, I can cry easily, but I started bawling. Because if I'm not there, God's not going to punish me for all eternity. We know God doesn't work that way. You know your Bible. God is a God of love. He doesn't want me to be where I don't want to be. But it will be as if I never existed. There will be no memory of me. Because heaven cannot be a sad place. And I started crying. And I said, Lord, I, I don't know. But please help me to be ready when you come. Because I don't want And we're talking about billions and gabillions. For, I mean, forever, forever. That, I can't even fathom that. And Jesus says the fifth reason why you shouldn't worry, don't worry about what happens now. Don't worry about those, those people that come by in that fancy car and, and, and they're ha, ha, ha. Don't, don't, don't worry about any of that. Don't worry about the disease. And the doctor said there's no cure. Man, you, we may have to rest for a while, but when Jesus comes and takes us home to our real home, all of that will be gone forever. Therefore, do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, I don't know about you. I... Uh, I usually do two things when I start a sermon, but you all, uh, you, the, the flags inspire me. I usually say good morning and happy Sabbath. And for whatever reason, there's a hearty good morning. Like I said, I did do that. I did do that. Good morning and the happy Sabbath goes down about 50%. I don't know why. I mean, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and I'm proud and happy to be a Seventh-day Adventist. I believe in the Sabbath is the Lord's day, and I believe he's coming back. The advent of Jesus Christ. I believe that. I hold on to that. When I see this condition, I say, Lord, the day's coming when you're going to make all things great, and whoever wants to will be there because God, Jesus promised five reasons. Number one, don't be troubled because I am God. There's room for you. I'm preparing a room just for you. I'm coming back, and we're, we're going to be together forever. However, if you keep reading in John 14, and we're almost done, imagine now, three and a half years, he's been teaching, he's been preparing. He's getting ready to go. Graduation day is coming. And the disciples say to him, verse 4, chapter 14, for he says, you know the way to the place where I'm going. He just said, don't worry about it, and you know where I'm going. And what is Thomas saying, verse 5? Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Now, before we get to beautiful verse 6, I, right there, I would have said, get out. Being Italian, German, I would have said, get out. You're fired. You're stubborn and pig-headed, and for three and a half years, you haven't learned to think. Get out. And that's what I would have done. I'm thankful my teachers didn't do that with me. You know, the Lord has a sense of humor. Now, I want, I want the, the, the young people that are here, just do me a favor and study. My senior year of academy, my English teacher calls me in with my mom and starts speaking about me in the third person. I thought you already know that's bad. Mrs. Anoboli, if Tony wants to graduate, now Tony's sitting right there, if Tony wants to graduate this year, Tony's going to have to repeat most of his sophomore year, and Tony better this, and Tony better that, and Tony better So my English teacher, I had English three years. It should only have been one, I had it three years. 
I said, good riddance. She was my member when I was a senior pastor. And I remember she was single, and I used to say, oh, we didn't, Miss Styles, Miss Styles, Miss Styles. Why is she not married? I know, because she's a grump. But then I got to know Miss Styles, and I realized that she had a mom with dementia, a sister with Down syndrome, and she devoted her life to taking care of them. Mom died, her sister died, they did funerals. Now she finds love. A year later, he dies of cancer. Let me tell you something. She's my hero. I have never heard her complain, ever. But be careful because those teachers that you think you're never going to see again could be your members. And I said, listen, I know you're sitting there with your pen, in the red pen, writing everything bad about my sermon. She said, Tony, let me tell you something. Yeah, you're pretty bad at grammar. But you speak to my heart. And to this day, I love her. And she said, Tony, when I go to sleep, I want you to do my funeral. But I'm telling you, Jesus didn't do that. He said, okay, now listen. <laughs> he was so patient. What do you mean you don't know? And then he said, now listen. I am the way, the life, and the truth. No one comes to the Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. Why was that important? We're, we're fin I promise we're finishing. I promise we are. We had a week of prayer. He would say, I promise him, go another half hour. So we know when he said, I'm finishing, we had another half hour. That's not the case today. In, the, in Eden, Adam and Eve enjoyed three things. Number one, they enjoyed face-to-face -face communion with God. Dad came down every day and met with them and talked with them. They only knew the truth that flowed from God. So they, every time they talked and they learned it was the truth. And number three, they experienced eternal life. They were eating from the tree of life. But when sin entered, those three things were gone. Number one, they no longer had face-to-face -face communion with God. Number two, instead of only knowing truth, now they knew truth and error. Your eyes will be open. And their eyes were open. The devil, that's his trap. He gives you a half-truth. And number three, they began to experience eternal death. And Isaiah says that we were separated. Not because God couldn't hear, or, or it's because our iniquities, the Bible says, have caused separation. But when Jesus came, Emmanuel, God with us, those three things were restored. Through Jesus, there was the way back to God. Through Jesus, there is the truth that flows out of him because Jesus always tells the truth. And through Jesus, number three, there was life, eternal, because of his sacrifice. So church family, one thing is for sure, this world is going to end. It's going to end. You don't want to be there? Jesus isn't going to make you be there. God will never force you. But this world will end. Eternity will begin. And the Lord of Lords says, and not only that, but I have a place for you. And I want to spend eternity with you. I paid the price for you. The decision you and I have to make, as I think about Mother's Day, and Father's Day, and not being able to be with my parents, but one day enjoying eternity with them and with my family, is that Jesus paid the price. A very wealthy man was told by his doctor that he was dying and said, you need to get your affairs in order because your time is short. And so as the man thought about all the wealth he had acquired, he began to get worried because he realized that his relationship with God was not where it should be, and it troubled him. Well, he had a five-year-old daughter, and the five-year-old, of course, you know, doctors were in and out, and so she knew something was wrong with Daddy and said, Mommy, what's wrong with Daddy? And Mom, you know, in those days doing the best she could, didn't, didn't know quite how to explain and says, Well, Daddy's going away on a long trip. Oh, so she went up into Daddy's room and jumped on his bed, and the, the innocence of a five-year-old says, Daddy, Mommy says you're going on a trip, a long trip. 
And of course, the dad realizing what mom meant. Oh, yes, 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 sweetheart. Daddy's going away on a long trip. Long time. And the little girl, again, with the innocence and concern, just grabs her daddy's cheeks and says, Daddy, when you get to where you're going, is there a home for you? And the man thought and realized that while he had acquired a lot on this earth, he wasn't sure there was a place waiting for him on the other side. So today, June 3, 2023, how's that going for you? How's it going? This isn't one of those fire and brimstone sermons. No, not at all. The Bible is true. Prophecies will be fulfilled. Jesus is coming back. Are you ready? Do you want to be there? Do you want Jesus to take you by the hand and take you to your room? And I, I listen, I just feel compelled this, this morning. I, I do this all the time. I'm going to make a special appeal. This is very special. Very special. If you know, thank you. There's, there's, there's a church that gets it and gets worship. Thank you. If you know you need to make changes in your life, and I think there are special moments in life, and perhaps this is one of them for you. If you know that your relationship with God isn't where it needs to be. Pastor Tony, but Jesus is on my list, but where on your list is Jesus? He needs to be number one. If you need to make changes and say, I, I don't want to risk not being in heaven when the earth made new. And you want me to have a special prayer, not because I have anything, but because... God listens to all of us. And today it'll be me. If you want to say, Pastor Tony, I want you to pray for me. Because I know I need to make some changes in my life. Maybe small ones, maybe big ones. I want you to come forward right here. Because I want to have a prayer for you. Because I don't want to leave this place knowing that somebody knew they needed to do something in their life. And, and, and they said, Lord, just help me. I, I want, because heaven will record those decisions today. And you know what it is. I'm telling you, I'm ADHD. I need to have an alarm every day to remind me to even have worship. Because I forget. I do. But oh, how I want to have a relationship with Jesus. If somebody today says, Pastor Tony, I need you to pray for me. I want you to come forward. If nobody comes forward, I'm okay with that too. And I praise the Lord. But if you want to strengthen your relationship with Jesus today, then just Let's just get together as a family and have a special prayer. As, as the beautiful hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus, is being played on the piano. And that's the best decision we can make. Amen? Because Jesus is coming back soon. I believe that. And we're going to be able to enjoy eternity. Some are going to do it under the mango tree. Jose Rojas says it's going to be under the jalapeno tree. I don't know where it's going to be. But we're going to be there. And then Jesus will take us by the hand to our room as he welcomes us home. We're going to wait just a few more seconds. And then we're going to have a prayer before we have our closing hymn. But this is the time to say, Lord Jesus, yes, I want to change. And I'm going to be praying that the Holy Spirit reminds you, however that's going to be, I don't know how it's going to be, but that he nudges you every day to be reminded of the commitment you're making here today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you because you love us. Even before the formation of the world, you had this plan in place just in case. And as we've been studying this Sabbath school lesson, the great controversy is real. And Christ, God's character is at stake. But we are so happy and grateful that Jesus paid the price so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And this morning we have learned through Jesus that we don't have to worry today or until he comes back because he is God. There's room for us. In fact, there's a customized room and you're coming to take us home and we're going to live there forever. Bless each person that has come forward. You know the desires of their hearts. You know why they're here and how genuine they are to make a relationship stronger with you. Honor that, Lord. Nudge them every day through the power of your Holy Spirit, the comforter, the counselor, to give 
you, all of us, may we give you full access to our own lives because we want to see Jesus. We want to be there at the sea of glass, how amazing it's going to be when we get the crown of righteousness. And then when we take it off and lay it at his feet because he is worthy to receive power and glory and honor forevermore. Thank you for that opportunity today. Heaven is recording June 3, 2023. These precious children of God have made this commitment. And Father, I end my prayer as I always do. Please, very soon, tell your son to come and take us home. We love you. We trust you. And we can't wait to see you. Bless us. Bless this church. Bless Pastor Sean as a shepherd. And Jesus come soon is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May God bless you as we now sing and prepare for our final hymn. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. And we have five reasons now why we should not be troubled. In order for us to take advantage of that, we have to decide to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Let's all stand for our closing song. No turning back, no turning back. <clears throat> Let's sing together. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, though no one join me, though no one join me, still I will follow, though no one join me, still I will follow, no turning back. No turning back, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. No, one more time, I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Father in heaven, no turning back. We wouldn't want to anyway. You have promised in your word that ears have not heard, eyes haven't seen. We have no concept of what you are preparing for us. How awesome that will be. Thank you again today that Jesus paid the price for everybody. And because of him, we can look forward to a wonderful, wonderful reality of eternity. Bless each child, young person, adult, and senior here today. And we want to see you face to face so soon. Bless us the rest of this Sabbath day. And until we see you face to face, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.